Does body language prove that Elizabeth Holmes of Theranos was lying to the media, investors, and her customers? We're going to analyze her body language to find out. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Derek Van Shake here. Elizabeth Holmes was the young founder and CEO of Theranos, which was promoted by Elizabeth as a revolutionary blood testing company that only needed a tiny amount of blood pricked from your finger to do hundreds of blood tests. Sounds good, right? The only problem was that the technology did not work, but she told everyone that it did work. So thousands of people were using and trusting her blood testing service at their local pharmacies while unknowingly receiving inaccurate results. Her company was worth $9 billion. However, now she's facing legal action and the company is being liquidated. I made a previous video discussing her scam. It became one of my most watched videos. One of the hotly debated questions was whether or not Elizabeth really lied to everyone, or maybe she was just delusional. Let's get into analyzing her body language to find out if she lied. What we're gonna do now is look at a few of her past interviews. This first clip is Elizabeth responding to articles claiming she misrepresented her company's blood testing technology. I mean, to be clear, that commentary in the press was 100% instigated by the lab industry and it showed up in press about us last year and then it's just sort of been repeated. Um, and pause. Elizabeth Holmes is holding her right arm with her left hand. What that indicates is a sign of self-comforting. And I looked at the entire interview multiple times. Nowhere during that entire interview was she doing that. If you also notice her breathing, she's giving very deep breaths. Why? It's because her heart rate is increasing. Typically when people lie, their heart rate is gonna increase very, very, very quickly, which causes their breathing pattern to differ. And what I would say about that is, is several things. Also notice the stuttering and stammering and pauses. Very, very atypical of her if we look at the entire interview. And that's how you determine if someone's lying. What you do is you look at what is typical of that person and then see how certain questions have caused them to deviate from what is typical. And here she is deviating drastically. Look where her eyes are. They're down on the floor. If you ever recall saying to somebody, if you're telling me the truth, look me in the eyes when you say that. Why is it that we want people to look us in the eye when they're saying something? People who are lying feel like you'll be able to see right through their lie if you can see their eyes. As the saying goes, your eyes are the windows to your soul. We are the only lab company that is actually really focused on leading with transparency. And it was really interesting because we had our first FDA clearance this summer. We also got our first FDA CLIA waiver. Right here, she is not looking into the interviewer's eyes. She is looking either past the interviewer or possibly right into his chest. The decision summaries. And she kind of looks up to kind of give a little bit of a smile to the interviewer to hope that the interviewer is buying what she's saying. She's looking for that affirmation from the interviewer. For more self-comforting holds. The next interview we're gonna look at is a Vanity Fair interview. In this scene, we have an audience member who happened to be Katie Couric, ask her about her company's technology. For example, this summer, our first- Let's look at her body language. She's leaning away from the audience, which says she's scared. Throughout the interview, she was not leaning at all. FDA clearance was on a test that had- Also, notice her breathing, deep breaths, deep sighs, things that she was not doing before. The reason why is because her heart rate has increased so drastically, causing her breathing rate to also increase drastically. All of which is completely atypical. Keep in mind, this is later in the interview. This is not the first couple minutes of the interview. Maybe she's just trying to get settled in. Maybe she has some butterflies in her stomach and just kind of little nerves. She was cool during the whole interview. It's only until she was asked about her company's technology does she start to act like this. Traditionally required a huge amount of blood uh, through these traditional vacutainer tubes and... Also notice the stuttering, stammering, crutch words, and pauses. She was not doing that throughout the interview. We redeveloped the chemistry, we redeveloped the hardware, we redeveloped the software, we developed the collection tubes uh, to be able to make it possible to do these tiny sample-based testing, and we've now... 
more deep breath sighs because their heart rate has increased. You may be asking, why does someone's heart rate increase if they're lying? Well, it's because of fear. They fear the question, so naturally it's kind of a fight or flight natural instinct mechanism in us to have our heart rate increase. Very, very jittery speech now. She was not speaking like this before. All of a sudden, she's asked about the technology, and she is a completely different person. I submitted 130 of these in pre-submissions to the FDA to take through this regulatory process. <laughs> Their own health information. Um, I think, I mean, we are... And now look what she's doing. She's intertwining her fingers to give herself a web massage to relieve some of the stress that she's feeling right now when she's trying to answer this question. This next interview is with Fortune. Fortune is ticked off right now. They were the first to put her on a cover. Now all of a sudden, all these stories are coming out specifically from the Wall Street Journal saying that her blood testing technology isn't anywhere close to what she says it is. Do you feel confident that that vision you laid out nine months ago will still happen, that you'll be able to do comprehensive tests from a single prick. Absolutely, and we've done it in the past, and we're gonna continue to do it in the future. Look what she just did. She shook her head no. If she believed that she was able to do it in the past and still able to do it in the future, she would be nodding her head yes. Keep in mind, her baseline, the way she typically acts, is with a head nod. When someone's asking her a question, she'll be giving a head nod. So if she really believed in what she was saying, you would think she would have a head nod when she was asked something that she truly believed in. But she didn't. She had a head shake. I want all of you to try this. Nod your head and say no. Now I want you to shake your head and say yes. See how weird that feels? That's exactly what she's doing right now. If you ever had someone shake their head at you and say they believe in you, they unfortunately don't believe in you. <laughs> Now she's on Mad Money. And if you don't know, Jim Cramer is a former hedge fund manager. He knows finance, he knows business. She knows if anyone's gonna be able to sniff out her lies, it's gonna be Jim Cramer. Watch how she responds to questions about her blood testing technology. We even just recently took our nanotainers uh -huh. through the FDA clearance process. Notice the deep breath, heart rate's increasing, becoming very, very nervous when talking about the technology. Also notice the wavering in her voice. It's a sign that she's very scared. Typically when you lie, you become scared because you are fearful that they're gonna find you out. If you have nothing to hide, you, you're not gonna be found out, you're fine. Also notice Jim Cramer. He has the most confused look on his face of just, you don't seem like you're telling me the truth. <laughs> and this next part, Listen to how she says it. And sent submissions in for those, and as part of that process. Did you notice anything with her voice? If you didn't, watch this. That was part of the act as well. Uh, one of the anecdotes in the book is that a, a new employee met with her in, in 2011, and it was at the end of a long day, and she was uh, getting up from her chair and um, expressed excitement that he had joined the company and uh, she forgot to put on the baritone for uh, a moment and slipped into a, a more natural sounding young woman's voice. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it dawned on him that, that she, it was a put on. And sent submissions in for those. And sent submissions in for those. She's faking her voice. When I was doing my research on her for this video, I was looking at 20 plus hours of footage. And yeah, she would occasionally come out of baritone, but then all of a sudden, <clears throat> come right back into baritone. She doesn't normally speak like that. It's an act for her to sound more authoritative and more convincing. During this whole interview, you can tell that Jim Cramer just felt like he was nailing jello to a tree. So he finally asked her, hey, why don't you just do the ultimate test just to prove that what you're saying is true? Quest Lab Corp, we want to do a head-to-head. -head. 200, 200, 300, 400 patients. What do you say? Yes? We, we, we've already done it. We've already done it, absolutely. She says she did it, but of course, shakes her head no, because she didn't do it, she lied. She knows how to pivot like a politician. So it was difficult to find places where she was lying. For example, if she was asked about how her blood testing technology worked, she'll just talk about how important the technology is. By doing this body language analysis, we were able to determine that yes, she did lie. It was not ignorance, it was not that she did not know, she totally knew, she just lied about it. Why? It didn't appear that she was actually money motivated. What motivated her instead was power, fame, and notoriety. She wanted to feel like a hero, and she did not care that she was putting thousands of people's lives at risk. 
The question is, should she go to prison? Let me know, put that in the comments below. When I was going through all this footage, I came across some absolutely ridiculous clips. If you think you're gonna get triggered by how obsessed the media was with her, I don't recommend you watch the rest of this video. So if you think you're gonna get triggered, turn this video off, watch one of my other videos, don't watch the rest of this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the top. To inspiring so many young women uh, with your presence and your intelligence and uh, your belief that young women can grow up and be just like you. It's reasonable to compare you, I usually don't do this, to Steve Jobs and what he did for computing. You founded this company 12 years ago, right? Yeah. Tell them how old you were. I was 19. <laughs> yeah. So. Don't worry about the future, we're in good hands. Elizabeth is getting the Horatio Alger Award. She is the youngest person to ever get the Horatio Alger Award. Healthcare pioneer is being compared to visionaries like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. You were the only woman up there with a lot of older white men. This is true. Yeah, I was. <laughs> but what was so wonderful about it is that these young girls who are in the audience Good morning, my name is Crystal Marichek. could connect uh, to see, me to as nothing but living proof that their dreams are possible. Whenever there's a quote-unquote glass ceiling, there's an iron woman right behind